Am I in trouble, Drumnot? I wouldn't care to say, sir. Have you read the Times this morning? The paper? No. Oh. Moist's mind ran back furiously over yesterday's interview. He hadn't said anything wrong, had he? It had all been good, positive stuff, hadn't it? Veterinary wanted people to use the post, didn't he? We always get a few copies straight off the press, said Drumnot. I shall fetch you one. He returned with the paper. Moist unfolded it, took the front page in one moment of agony, read a few sentences, put his hand over his eyes and said, Oh, gods. Did you notice the cartoon, Postmaster? said Drumnot innocently. It may be thought quite droll. Moist risked another glance at the terrible page. Perhaps in unconscious self-defence his gaze had skipped over the cartoon, which showed two ragged street urchins. One of them was holding a strip of penny stamps. The text below read, First urchin, having acquired some of the newly minted stampings, Here, have you seen Lord Veterinary's backside? Second urchin, Nah, and I wouldn't lick it for a penny, neither. Moist's face went wax. He's seen this? He cried. Oh, yes, sir. Moist stood up quickly. It's still early, he said. Mr. Trooper is probably strong. If I run, he can probably sit here. I'll go right away. That'll be okay, won't you? It'll come out of the paperwork. I don't want to be a burden to anyone. I'll even. into the patrician's office. Only Lord Veterinary's hands were visible on either side of the times. Moist re-read the headlines with dull horror. We don't break down, Postmaster Bows. Amazing attack on cranks. Pledges. We'll deliver anywhere using remarkable new stamps. That was the main story. It was alongside a smaller story which nevertheless drew the eye. The headline was, Grand Trunk Down Again, Continent Cut Off. And at the bottom, in a heavier typeface to show it was meant to be right-hearted, and under the headline, History Not Be Denied, were a dozen stories about the things that had happened when the ancient post turned up. There was the problem that had turned into a track park. Mr. Park had described to be, and others, too. The post had changed under the walls of the small ways, cutting a window into history and seeing what it be. That seemed to be the entire the front page, except for a story about the bottom of for the Mr. Kibble. I'm really sorry, Moist began. Anywhere in the world, even to the gods, our postmen don't break down so easily. History is not to be denied. Very impressive, Mr. Litvig. You have made quite a splash, Veterinary smiled. As the fish said to the man with the lead weight tied to his feet. I didn't exactly say that. In my experience, Miss Crimslock tends to write down exactly what one says. It's a terrible thing when Joe is but he feels instinctively that it's cheating somehow. And I guess he must leave promise that he notes me too. What? These stamps a promise to carry a penny's worth of mail. A promise that must be kept. Do come and look at this. He stood up and walked across to the window way back. Do come, Miss Lindley. Fearing that he might be held down, the promise was that he did so. See the big plaques tower over there. 
Not much activity on the Grand Trunk this morning. Problems with the tower out on the plains, I gather. Nothing is getting to stone that and beyond. But now, if you look down, it took Moist a moment to understand what he was seeing, and then, that's a queue outside the post office, he said. Yes, Mr. Limpig, said Vesnavi with dark glee. For stamps as advertisers, anchor for horses have an instinct for, you might say, joining in the fun. Go to it, Mr. Limpig. I'm sure you're full of ideas, don't take it to Lord Vetinari returned to his den and picked up the paper. It's right there on the front page, Moist thought. He can't have not seen it. Uh, uh, about the other thing, he ventured, staring at the picture. What other thing would that be? There was a moment of silence. Uh, nothing, really. I'll be honest. Indeed you will, Postmaster. The mail must get through must it must. Vetinari listened to distant doors shut, and then went and stood at the window figure hurry across the courtyard. Drumnot came and tidied up the out train. Well done, sir, he said Stand quietly. Thank you, your grace. I see Mr. Horse Fry has passed away, sir. So I understand, Drumnot. There was a stir in the crowd as Moist crossed the street. To his unspeakable relief, he saw Mr. Spools standing with one of the serious men from his printery. Spools hurried over to him. Yeah, I have several thousand of, of both of the uh, items, he whispered, pulling out a package from his coat. Pens and pages. They're not the best we can do, but I thought you might be in want of them. We had the cracks with that again. You're a lifesaver, Mr. Spools. If you could just take them inside. Oh, by the way, how much is a clax message to stole at? Yeah, even a very short message would be at least 30 pence, I think, said the engraver. Thank you. Moist stood back and cupped his hands. Ladies and gentlemen, he shouted, the post office will be open in five minutes for the sale of penny and two penny stamps. In addition, we will be taking mail for Stone Lat. First express delivery to Stone Lat leaves on the hour, ladies and gentlemen, for the this morning. The cost will be ten pence per standard number. I repeat, ten pence. The Royal Mail, ladies and gentlemen, accept no substitutes. Thank you. There was a stand in the crowd and several cars carried away. Moist led Mr. Spooks into the room, lightly closing the door in the face of the crowd. He felt the tingle he always felt when the game was afoot. Life should be made of moments like this, he decided. With his heart singing, he poured out orders. Stanley! Yes, Mr. Limpig, said the boy behind him. Run along to Hobson's living stable and tell them I want a good, fast horse ride. Something with a bit of fizz in his blood. Not some feeged up old screw, and I know the difference. I want it here in half an hour. Off he goes. Yes, sir. Perfection, sir. Bring up some kind of table for a cat, will you? said Moist. In five minutes, we open to accept mail and sell stamps. I'm taking letters to Stolat while the cracks is down, and you're acting postmaster while I'm gone. Mr. Spools! I'm right here, Mr. Limpig. You really don't have to shout, said the engraver reproachfully. Sorry, Mr. Spools. More stamps, please. I'll need something to do mail to come back. Can you do that? And I'll need the fives and the dollar stamps as soon as. Are you right, Mr. Grote? The old man was sweating. Mr. Grote? That's right, Mr. Grote. Have you been acting post? Has ever been acting postmaster? Suddenly, Mr. Grote dropped to his knees and gripped moisture around the legs. Oh, thank you, sir. I won't let you down, Mr. Lippitt. You can run around there, sir. Neither rain nor snow nor blum of... Yes, yes. Thank you, acting postmaster. Thank you, that's right. Thank you, said Moist, trying to pull away. Please, get up, Mr. Grote. Mr. Grote, please. Can I wear the wig and hat while you're gone, sir? It would have been such a long, sir. I'm sure it would, Mr. Grote, but not to the stay the hat will find the stone out. Grote stood up. Should it really be you that takes the hat, sir? Who else? 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 Who And the rest of the gentlemen are over and rich in years. Moist rubbed his hands together. No argument, acting postmaster Grote. Now, let's sell some stamps. The door shut and the crowd flocked in. Vetinari had been right. If there was any action, the people of Anchor Moore were right to be part of it. Penny stamps flowed over the makeshift counter. After all, the reasoning went, for a penny you got something worth a penny, right? After all, even if it was a joke, it was a safe as buying money. And envelopes came the other way. People were actually writing letters in the post office. Moist made a mental note. Envelopes were a stamp already off. A sheet of folded paper inside of an instant letter, just as ink. That was an important rule of any game. Always make it easy for people to give you money. To his surprise, although he realised it shouldn't have been, Drumknot elbowed his way through the crowd with a small but heavy leather package, sealed with a heavy wax seal over the city press, the heavy V. 
It was addressed to the mayor of Sobat. Government's business, he announced pointedly as he handed it over. Do you want to buy any stamps for it? said Moist, taking the packet. What do you think, Postmaster? said the clerk. I definitely think government business travels free, said Moist. Thank you, Mr. Limpig. The Lord likes a fast learner. Other mail for Stolat did get stamped, though. A lot of people had friends or businesses. Moist looked around. People were scribbling everywhere, even holding the notepaper in the walls. The stamps and the money were shooting fast. At the other end of the wall, the golems were sorting the endless mail. You should have seen it, sir. You should have seen it. Lipstick, are you? He snapped out of a dream of chandeliers to see a thick set man in front of him. Recognition took a moment, and then said that this was the owner of Hobson's little estate, and once the most famous in his mouth and whimpered gently for a few seconds until he felt better. He'd ridden bare back a few times when things had been really hot, but Boris had the eyes of a crazy thing. But back off now and he'd be just a fool in a shiny hat. You had to give him a show, an image, something to remember. All he had to do was stay on until he left the city and then find a suitable bush to jump off into. Yes, that'd do. And then stagger into stone out, hourly, still with the mail, having valiant There was a cheer 
when he strode out onto the steps again. The sun, on cue, decided to appear from the mists and sparkle off his wings. Boris was looking at the window of the man and chewing his lips. This didn't feel moist. If a horse like Boris was required, it would be something was planning something. Mr. Pump, I shall need you to give me a leg up, he said, slinging the first back around his neck. Yes, Mr. Lipvig, said the golem. Mr. Lipvig! Moist turned round to see Sakharissa Cripslock hurrying up the street, notebook in hand. Always a pleasure to see you, Sakharissa, said Moist. But I'm a little busy right now. eventually to flavour the gum in licorice, orange, cinnamon and banana flavours, but not strawberry because I hate strawberries. He could see her smile as she wrote this down. Then she said, I did hear you correctly, Ty. You are offering to carry cracks messages. Certainly, ongoing messages can be put on the trunk in stone out. Helpfulness is our middle name. Are you sure it's not cheekiness? I don't understand, I'm sure. Now, if you will... Racehorse, and he would have been a very good one were it not for his unbreakable habit at the off of attacking the horse next to him and jumping the rail to the horse bend. one hand on his hat, wedged his toes into the belly band, and hung on to the reins as Broadway came at him all at once. Carts, people blowing past, his eyeballs pressing into his head. There was a cart across the street, and there was no one but a steering horse. There was a long, slow, silent. Drifting 